Hey guys, update on the transmission. Hang on, I'll show you what I got. And ready to be welded. I've got the shafts over here, got the clips out, got the ends cleaned up and prepped, getting ready to weld them together and see if I can't get everything welded up and finish today. Uh, I would do it while I'm filming, but I can't. I don't have any way of holding this thing, and hopefully this camera won't crap out like it did the other day. I dropped it. But as you can see, this is all taken care of. Uh, like I said, the rest spots will always be there, but I'm going to be running an oil immersion, and so that will keep them covered and keep the air and keep them lubricated so there won't be any problems out of it. And I am getting ready to get this thing taken care of before it gets any cooler out here. And I'll show you. Let's see, I think I got it set on macro. These are done. A little bit of grit in that one tooth. I hope this is clear. I think it is. So that one's all prepped and ready to go. And that one's all prepped and ready to go. Going to run a bead all the way around here then I'm going to grind the tip of this off so I'm going to probably going to have to to get it to where it'll fit inside the bull gear that's the bull gear and then I'm going to put everything back in and I'm going to tack it and then I'm going to flip it weld it Tack it again, pull it out, and then weld the hell out of it. Let it cool off and put it back together. And then I'll get this thing finished up. There is the 14 horsepower. It's over there. I posted a couple of questions on uh, the ATLF forum the other day, and Jameis suggested to go ahead and go with a 14, so I'm going to go with a 14, uh, provided I don't have to go through it and do a whole lot to it. I don't think I do, um, but, and then I'll get this thing cleaned up, oil it, and put it on the shelf till I need it. So that's it. Oh, I got me a new table to weld on too. It's fantastic. It's better than that little collapsible sawhorse. It's actually big enough and got a lot of room. It's all steel, and there's plenty of room to put shit, because God knows I like to put shit places. Here we go. I'll holler back at you. Okay, I've gotten everything cooled off, and got everything prepped and draped. I'm going to tack with B, tack right there. I'm going to flip it over tack it in the same places, pull everything out, and then I'm going to weld it. I've got this one all covered up to avoid any spatter so there won't be a whole, whole lot of cleanup, and I will get this thing wrapped up. Let's see. I'm airing it out in here too to get all the paint, uh, not the paint fumes, well yeah, the burnt paint, all the burnt paint fumes. change the setting on this camera okay everything is finished with it hang on I'll try to hold the camera and show you everything is welded and it's all rolling got a little bit of a binding right there but I think that's gonna wear in I may sit here and put a tire on it and spin it a few times it's just a little tight right in there and right in there I could take out the washer but I don't want to do that really because it's going to eat the wall of the pan up so I'm just going to sit here and turn this a little bit there we go but eh, the wheels aren't bad that should hold 
And the problem that a lot of people run across when they're doing these is uh, the check ball. Everybody's afraid of the check ball. Well, here is check ball. The check ball goes in there and goes in the shifter selector and holds it in place. This is a quarter inch ball bearing and I bought it at Walmart. Uh, it goes in my slingshot. Uh, premium slingshot ammo quarter inch. 250 of these. I think I paid six dollars for them. So these in a pinch will work in here as a check ball. Right in there. It would fit in that hole. Your spring, well your ball and your spring and then you put your cap back on. You know, have a little dab of grease in there to hold everything in place. But yeah, so if you ever lose these and I have lost them, that's all you do. You can put a brand new one in it every time if you wanted to. This was a big help to me. Got it to Amazon. I think I paid 15, 20 bucks for it. I knew I was going to do more than one of these. So this is the technician's manual uh, for most all of the more common and popular Tecumseh and Peerless. Tecumseh, Peerless, same thing. And it helps out a lot. Also, there is another grouping, and I've run across them periodically. Spicer and Foot are all uh, subsidiaries or divisions of Dana, I believe. I'm, I may be wrong, but, you know, the Dana rear ends that, that are really popular for as far as drag racing and everything, that's them. Tecumseh, Peerless, for the transaxles. So that are the two different ones that I run across anyway and got it all together let it sit I may just slightly take a little bit off the side of that a little bit off the side of that just to uh, loosen it up a little bit because it's still I mean I hit one spot and just gets stiff of course you know putting the tires on it's a lot different than turning it by hand but it went back together nicely Everything, oh, it's hard to do this with one hand. Everything's moving and clicking pretty good. Uh, so I am going to go in the house. And that's it. I'll get this thing up. If you have any questions or anything, send me a message. Thanks.